Hi, I'm Brad Bertelli, the creator here at the Q's History and Discovery Center. Welcome back to another edition of our What's Inside the Museum as we try to bring our, our exhibits to you until you can come in and see us for real. Today we're going to talk about um, two, these two paintings behind me, which were both surprises when they arrived. When we were, as I was setting up the museum and trying to figure out how to, what exhibits to do and how to tell the story of, of you know, that we're trying to tell here, these two items were not on my periphery. And, uh, but I was thrilled when they came into, they were gifted to us. The one on our left was from a, a, a gentleman named Bill Losner, who is a local and a, a homestead fixture. If you've ever heard of Losner Park, that is, that's his family. Um, that's a, a that's a fantastic one. I'll get uh, paint I'll get into in a minute. And the one on our, our right is uh, was a was a donation to us from the Stone family. And some of you may recognize that painting as it uh, was behind the bar at Ziggy's Comp for about 30 years, I think. And um, then I went to a private residence who was a big a big a big fan of, of Ziggy's and the owner's son gifted it to the Stone family, and then when they sold their out of Robert property uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, they decided this would be a fantastic uh, location for it. We were thrilled to hear that, and I thought it was a great companion piece to the Bill Lozner uh, donation. Um, now, sometimes we get artifacts or our questions are asked of us, of, of me, um, you know, about what, where something came from, or do, do I know this question, do I know that question? And sometimes I reach out to our Facebook page um, because we have a lot of followers and a lot of them are old time, keys people, and sometimes you never know who has a, a tidbit of information. And one of the questions I had about this painting was who painted it? And all it says was A. McKenzie. And a couple years ago, I posed that question to our Facebook world and nobody really had an answer. No one, you know, no, I would recognize the, the painting, but not who the artist was. And then a young lady from Key Largo uh, contacted us about a week and a half ago, was asking the same question. She was doing a paper for a, a paper on this painting and was asking who was a, Marti a, a, a McKenzie. And I gave her the story I just gave you that I, tr I didn't know. I tried to reach out and couldn't come up with a question or couldn't come up with the answer. But um, she, so she posted on our Facebook page and had much better luck than I did. And it turns out A. McKenzie uh, was Artie McKenzie, who was from the New England states, but like many people who come to the Keys, loved to fish. And in the early 50s, had a fishing camp up in Key Largo. In the, in the wintertime, he had a fish camp in Key Largo, and in the, in the summertime, he had a, a fish camp um, somewhere along the Canadian US border. Um, but he also loved to paint and uh, got into uh, landscapes and, turned and ended up doing this really cool picture of the train approaching Pigeon Key. Um, so, uh, oh man, I forgot her name. I was gonna give her a shout out, so I'm digging my pocket real quick and look at my notes. Arabelle Moya from Key Largo, thank you very much for, uh, for helping us figure out who Amy McKenzie was. Um, it's a really cool painting. It's a popular picture. We have several pictures of that in our, in our collection um, of the train approaching Pigeon Key. You can tell it's Pigeon Key by the way, the, by, the, by the bridges, by the bridge. Um, but it was also cool. They're large and they take up a lot of space. But we had this other piece by, by Bill Losner, donated by Bill Losner, who, um, and I, I like these two pieces because most of our exhibits, most of the museum, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of history, there's a lot of artifacts and pictures and, and storyboards. And I thought it would be nice to have a place in the, in the museum where it was a simpler, a simpler look at, at some of the early history. Um, and that's why I kind of like this wall. When you first walk in the museum um, on the exhibit floor, this is kind of what you're greeted with and kind of gives you a nice introduction to the museum. Um, I'm gonna talk about this painting on the left real quick or not so real quick. Uh, it is really neat. It was done in the 1920s, and it was a promotional piece 
done to show how Key Largo might have looked had the land boom really taken off. And when you look closely at it, there's a lot of Flagler-esque style hotels that were, that were um, painted in, um, and the streets, and the canals going through. And it's really kind of a cool piece. Why don't you come down here real quick? And it shows kind of a, a, a you know, a, a, close, a, a closer look at it. But it's really neat how they, how they thought that Key West, or how they hoped, I'm sorry, Key Largo, how they hoped Key Largo might look. And um, it's just a really, and it's, it's one of those pieces where you look at it, and the longer you look at it, the, the more things you see on it. And what's kind of cool, let's go back up here. Um, you can tell that this was done, it hung in the uh, Homestead Bank. First. Uh, the First National Bank of Homestead from 1932 to 1980. And uh, it's kind of cool because you can see up, up here, this is the Card Sound Road. When the painting was done, that was the only entrance by automobile to the, the Florida Keys to Key Largo. And you can see it's called the Dixie, the Dixie Highway um, on the map. And then as you come down the car, come down the, North Key Largo, and here's Lake Surprise, and this is the, what's the 18 mile stretch today, but what during the, when this was done in the 1920s, this was the, you know, the, the railroad stage, the railroad coming in. Now this hung in, in, at the bank, and, and the bank back in you know back in the 1930s, this was the only bank between Homestead and Marathon, and this was the bank that helped uh, you know do the payroll for the men working on Henry Flatler's railroad. And there's some uh, some great history with that with the Lawsner family, and with this painting, and we're so thrilled that that Bill was a. Uh, Found us, thought of us to uh, to to show it. And Bill, whatever he calls, it's always exciting because he's the gift that keeps on giving. And I know when I see his name on my phone, it's like, oh, cool. What does he have? He's got a big warehouse in in, in in Homestead with a lot of Homestead artifacts. Some of the, some of it that relates to the keys. And whenever he finds comes across something key related, he always gives me a call, and it's always kind of like Christmas time. Um, but when the the painting was in his. The painting was in his uh, warehouse up in, up in Homestead for decades and suffered some abuse, you know, some wear and tear up there. So we had a local artist, Dan Lawler, who is a good friend of the, of the museums, who was generous enough to uh, um, to help restore the painting. It had some holes in it. Uh, it had been torn up here during his time at the warehouse, and. Uh, it's a really, uh, it's a really cool addition, and, and, and it's one of those pieces that people come in and look at, and just kind of stare and, and and watch and see, you know, what things might have been, you know, how they were hoping that Key Largo would have developed. Uh, didn't turn out that way. It's, there's no big Flagler-esque style hotels or, or marinas up on Key Largo like there are, uh, like there are on the painting. But we're, it's always. We couldn't operate without the generosity of our community and, and, and our and our um, you know our, our benefactors and, and our visitors who you know bring us these really cool artifacts who tell us their stories who donate generously so we can sit here and come to you and uh, you know share you know, all this great history of the Florida Keys and we're so thankful for everybody who comes in with a picture or a postcard or a painting or or you know that great thing that helps us go around. The, the money that helps us sustain this wonderful facility that we have been fortunate enough to be able to bring to our community. And so thank you everybody for, for donating. I know there's a button on Facebook now that you feel like, you know, you need five bucks, 10 bucks, 100 bucks. Every bit helps us to maintain and help us continue our efforts here to bring the really great history of the Florida Keys. I know it's a great place when it opens back up. It's a great place to come down and relax and fish and unwind and escape, but it is also, there's so much history here in the Florida Keys, and it's so wonderful that we have this place, this facility, to show that it is more than just a place to come fishing. Fishing is a great part of our history, but the Florida Keys are so much more than that. And when we open up, back up, when the Keys open up, open back up, please come down, ask for me to give you a personal tour, I would love to show you around, talk about these exhibits and, uh, and show off 
you know, and, and brag about what we've done because we're so thrilled and to be able to do what we do. And thank you so much. So, say goodnight to Jennifer in California. Hey, Jennifer in California. Turns out I just, was just told that you're on. I love it when my friends from my uh, my past lives show up to support us and and, uh, and, uh, and see what I'm doing. I haven't seen her in like 30 years. And Lupe and Lupita. Ah, and, and Lupe, my old boss from Lazy Days. What's going on? I could use some Lazy Days talk right now. Anybody else out there that's really familiar? Ellen's out there. Ellen's always there. She's one of our great, our, our great docents. Perry Scuderi is out there. Who? It's Perry Scuderi. He's been uh, frequent. Yeah. Perry Scuderi, another uh, uh, big neighbor of, of, of Bill Lozner. Um, they're good friends, and uh, and uh, we, we love all the support and all, all of our friends here in, in, in the Upper Keys and Marathon and Key West as our, as our reach grows, and we're just thrilled to be able to do what we do. And uh, so Thursday, we'll be back at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll talk more about another exhibit here at the Keys History and Discovery Center. Um, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're staying uh, safe. And uh, thanks so much, and I'll see you Thursday. Bye-bye.